We've got a bit of news you're gonna to wanna to keep on your radar at the beginning of next week. I know that Representative Matt Gates is going to be watching it, and that is that Joel Greenberg, one of his best buddies, is set to plead guilty on Monday to a federal charges as part of a plea deal with the feds. Now, Greenberg, who had previously pleaded not guilty, currently faces 33 counts amid a slew of crimes. Since his initial arrest last June, the indictment has expanded from stalking and identity theft to include charges of stealing from the tax office he once led in Florida and sex trafficking a minor. A 17 year old girl who Greenberg claimed in a confession letter had been paid to have sex with him and a number of his associates, including Gates. Now, in terms of what exactly is going to happen next week, we don't have very specific details. The Thursday court filing doesn't provide details of exactly which charges he's gonna plead guilty to or the conditions of his agreement with the US Attorney's Office. But two sources familiar with the investigation have said Greenberg will likely not be able to shake off the sex trafficking charge. A conviction for sex trafficking a minor carries a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years in prison. But the initial reporting said that he would likely be pleading guilty to six of the 33. Now if he were doing that and believing that that would be sufficient as part of the deal, Getting so many of them knocked away implies a close working relationship with the investigators and likely the possibility that he had had valuable information to provide in exchange for getting rid of a couple of dozen other charges. So again, we don't know exactly what's going to happen to Greenberg, let alone what this might mean for Representative Matt Gates. But it's probably not good news from the Congressman's point of view. Now, John just gave you the facts in a newsman like way. I will summarize this way. Na 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 na. Okay, so this guy strikes a plea deal. Remember, Matt Gates and him were on the record about a billion percent back and forth. Oh yeah, you want to get hookers? That's not an exact quote, but basically, and it's not my words, it's their words. Again, I'm paraphrasing though. And then they would talk about the specific girls, they would do stupid things like write in, what's the reason for paying them tuition? When you're trying to get young girls yeah. and you're paying for young girls, don't write it's for tuition. But it's worse, Matt Gates actually wrote the name of the girl on the Venmo account. It just doesn't get any dumber. It looks like Greenberg's got a thousand pieces of documents that he could hand over to prosecutors. His lawyer indicated that he already did. Um, and so now, uh, usually uh, rich white men get away with everything in this country, if we're keeping it real. And Republicans, if they're right wingers, they're like almost above the law. But this is really bad, and he's not named Donald Trump. So I just, I'm so curious. Because if Matt Gates doesn't at least have to resign, I mean, him going to prison, it seems impossible. A right wing white man going to prison in this country that's wealthy and already powerful seems literally impossible, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll say, okay, how about just leaving office? Is that possible? And if he doesn't, that means, no, that's it. Right wing, right white men, unfortunately, in this country, or maybe fortunately for them, Totally above the law, they could do anything, including having sex with underage girls and trafficking them and still get away with it. But my guess is he'll at least have to resign. But I'm not positive, Mike. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the first time in his life that he's ever faced any sort of accountability whatsoever. I mean, his father is super rich, so there's that. But also, I just wanna comment on this story. So it's both illuminating and perplexing at the same time. It's illuminating because now we kind of understand why he was the one member of Congress to vote against a sex trafficking bill just a couple of years ago. So now it all makes a little bit more sense. But it's confusing because he's currently going on an America First tour with Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's a former QAnon member, perhaps a current QAnon member. And aren't they supposed to be against the sex traffickers? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm confused by this. Yeah. I feel like she should be taking a stand here. She should be outraged. She should be calling him out. But when it's their own team, Crickets. Yeah. Mike, it, it almost sounds like you're saying that they don't actually care about any of the things that they claim to care about. That that they're Perhaps. actually don't think that the immigrant that crossed the border with zero dollars in his pocket actually secretly controls the entire United States government and sets the rules. That they just use them as a target to demagogue. Like they don't actually think top politicians of this country run child sex trafficking rings. 
and they just use that, say that about Democrats to destroy their brand and to win politically and to use child molestation as a deeply callous, immoral political football. It almost sounds like that's what you're saying and like what they seem to be doing with their actions. But I'm sure Marjorie Taylor Greene during the breaks of their joint tour mm -hmm. is chiding Matt Gates very religiously. Matt, you have been a bad boy. I'm sure yeah. she says all the time. She probably yells into his mailbox, but we just don't <laughs> see it. She outwardly she seems to be supporting the person charged with the most child sex trafficking allegations in all of Congress and the guy who's number 2, Jim Jordan who didn't who's not charged with doing it himself, but protecting a notorious child molester who was his friend uh when he was a wrestling coach. So, yeah. two for two, let alone of course the big guy Donald Trump, who was friends with Jeffrey Epstein, is on the record as saying that Jeffrey Epstein liked women as much as I do, but uh, but he likes them really young. That means that Trump knew. Trump knew that Jeffrey Epstein was having sex with underage girls and thought it was a joke, thought it was funny. Well, and then when Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested, he wished her well twice, even though she's literally the most notorious child sex trafficker in the country. She mm -hmm. was Jeffrey Epstein's partner. And all of that overwhelming information about actual child molesters in the Republican Party, let alone the former Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, who turned out to be an actual child molester himself, and etc. And they're like, yeah, the Democrats did it. Mm -hmm. QAnon and every right wingers, you're all a joke. All you want, you don't want to care about child molestation. You don't care about that at all. The fact that you use it as a political prop makes you a disgusting person. Disgusting. You're you're Anyway, you know it's just, it's just simple minded. It is it is setting up a dichotomy where uh, you don't ever ever have to think critically about any particular Democrat, whether there might be valued any of their proposals or maybe we disagree, but they're still honorable gentlemen or whatever. No, they 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 rape and eat children. So that I have now I've cleansed you. You never have to think critically about them. And the thing about Matt Gates, it's not just that she, like, let's say she was just being silent about Matt Gates and Jim Jordan and Donald Trump. That would be cowardly enough. But she's going on a tour with him. She is basically the only Republican that's standing by him, which is, it's such a more active thing to do that it, it, it almost implies to me that this is also about sending a message to her followers that, like, I'm going to reassure you in case you ever have an uncomfortable thought, like one ounce of cognitive dissonance about the fact that there might be pedophiles in our own party. No, you know that you trust me. I'm vouching for him. The Democrats are all Satanists who eat baby faces. And the Republicans, no matter how bad it may sound, We'll, we will just we'll put it under the umbrella of fake news. I'll, I'll stand by them so you know that they're good. It's this perfect black and white dichotomy. And she, when, when put to the test, is always going to, to, to buttress that. Look, guys, two things about this. Uh, number one, I, I talk about a lot this a lot more in my theoretically upcoming book. <laughs> uh, so you can get it at justiceiscomingbook.com, justiceiscomingbook.com. Um, and what is the abortion issue? It's about Democrats killing babies. Mm -hmm. So QAnon has been around for a long, long time. It's a giant part of the Republican Party. It, and they've always, so while the Democrats keep beseeching the Republicans, oh, our beloved Republican colleagues, Nancy Pelosi recently said, she just wants the Republican Party to be stronger. And Joe Biden's constantly rooting for the Republican Party. The Republicans have been saying that Democrats are child killers for as long as I've been alive. Yeah. Okay. And so, so this is nothing new. And so the second point is, but if they don't actually mean it, which is obvious they don't, based on all the evidence we just gave you, and they don't even care about child molestation when it actually happens, what do they care about? You know what that unites the right wing voters? Fear and hatred. Yeah. So black people, brown people, immigrants, etc. They're coming for my money, they're coming for my house, they're coming for my daughter, they're coming for my wife. Always worried about their wife, I don't know what it is, right? I need a big gun because I'm insecure, etc. Fear, 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 hatred, hatred, hatred. Let's be honest, that's what unites them. Yeah. The only thing that unites them. Yeah, also, and you'll have to do the research yourself, both Gates and Green have been known to party. I'll just say that, that unites them as well.